Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Let's Jalia Wala. I have somebody with me who is one of the most important uh, people in the education sphere in this country. He's larger than life. Every day you talk to him, morning, night, he's full of education. Chaudhary Faisal Mujtaq. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. What is it that you saw in Pakistan that got you going around education? Opportunity and opportunity and opportunity. Um, there's nothing more profound than giving back to your country and that also through literacy and education. Uh, so for me, it was inherited. I was born to a teacher and all my life I've seen my mother working with young children, school professionals, academic peers and classrooms. So for me, it is in the genes. Oh, it, it, it does flow in the gene and your entire family has been in education. Indeed. Roots is what you have been known by and within Roots you have created your own world. Tell me a little about that. Well, I was born into this world of teaching and learning and um, I used to go to school uh, in an early learning center. I didn't come home happy and my mom said, what good is education if the child is not having love, joy and creativity? The main common reason for her is to have a happy child coming back home or going to school. So that is how she borrowed a building in, a, in Harley Street district of Rawalpindi and from a small two-room uh, school she started a project called Roots and uh, so the story of Roots was embedded in passion, in, in, in developing uh, individual pupils portfolio. It was all about having a happy experience Wherever in the country around the world today, you will find someone we call it Rootsian. You will see a sense of excitement, uh, a sense of uh, positivity, optimism and hope. And more or less they reflect the Jaliawala personality. They do. Oh, that's very kind of you. You've always been kind. You've supported me a lot. Saw me very young. Uh, so how many students now? How many campuses? What brands are you running? Well, it started in 1988 from Harley Street and uh, for all those years uh, we've been working, my mom and dad, they have been working together. Uh, I went to Hassan Abdal Cadet College and then later I went to the United Kingdom. I did accounting and finance and then got a job with PricewaterhouseCoopers Consulting. So I was very lucky uh, to be a member of Pricewaterhouse prestigious uh, business management consulting division in the city of London. We only took 11 kids. And uh, after that, I worked with IBM Business Strategy Consulting and uh, I also qualified as a Chartered Management Accountant while working in the UK. Wow, never, but, never got to know all of this yeah, about but you. But my heart was not happy while I was there doing project consulting with the BBC, uh, with Ministry of Defence in the UK, with Lloyd's Register of Shipping and with Equitable Life Assurance Society and I always felt there's something missing. And that was to work and to contribute back in your roots and back in Pakistan. Came back, started working with mom and dad. It's never easy to work with mom and dad. A lot never of, easy. A yes. lot of people <laughs> say, ke, you know, set ka bacha hai, to inherited hai. When you're working in a corporate or a semi-corporate or an educated or a social environment, there's always this element of the society, uh, the family and then the corporate governance. So in a family environment, most of the decisions are taken on the breakfast table. So well, it yes. was very challenging yeah. to, uh, mm -hmm. to, 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 to be a part of the change and to bring that change yeah. and sooner or later. But anyway, I started working as an A-level accounting teacher. Then I worked as a student counselor. So I am that son of a restaurant owner who first worked in the kitchen and then worked in the serving tables and then worked in the cleaning. So my grooming and training has been through classrooms, through counseling, through teaching, through uh, outreach, and then within my ranks and file, I came up as a director. Which is why you can pay that attention to that detail because you've, you've been around and you've done this. 
Um, so uh, from roots to roots millennium, roots millennium itself as a system has become so big. And within that I keep hearing there is so much, there is some something which entitles students in studying in Pakistan to get degrees from abroad. There is a lot of exciting brands that you have created during this time. Can you quickly tell us about that? For me, the slogan was one world, one school. I wanted to have an education system in Pakistan which brings the world to my students. So my slogan is, if you can't go there, we bring the world to you. So similarly, we say, if you can't go to London, we bring London to you. Roots Millennium was created as part of my vision and commitment to the Millennium Development Goals. Now they are called the Sustainable Development Goals. There's a whole generation of young millennials I saw rising up. They were media frenzy. They were digital savvy. Uh, they did not believe in the fragmented, saturated, 20th century, non-scientific, factory-modeled education. They had empathy, they had compassion, they had ideas. So I wanted to create an education system where it is student-centered. It is not just teacher-centered, where it is learning-centered. I wanted to focus from exams to assessments. I wanted to focus to, from learning to life skills. And now here I've created an education system through my different brands. TMUC is for the first time, it's a transnational educational institution. So here in Pakistan, we had the public education system, then we had the private education yeah. system, and we did not have an opportunity where our students could study international business skills, professional accounting, management, arts, social sciences, humanities degrees. So to the Millennium Universal Colleges is an HEC recognized international institution which awards degree through the University of London, which includes the Royal Holloway and um. London School of Economics and Political Science. We also award degrees through the University of Creative Arts and University of Hertfordshire and professional ACCA, ICAP and ICAW professional qualifications. So there are a lot of collaborations that we see around yeah, and you're able to award those degrees to students studying in Pakistan. The universities, uh -huh. uh, our partner universities, they award those degrees. They are called articulated and uh, uh, they are called articulated agreement where the teaching and learning is done in Pakistan at a fraction of the cost. Yeah. So an average degree which costs about 14 to 15 thousand pounds in the UK, students have to pay 2,000 or 2,400 pounds here to study in Pakistan. The award is given by the university in the UK and now it is recognized by the Higher Education Commission. We initiated Future World Schools. So Future World Schools was a concept which was very technology enabled, student friendly, and an inclusive concept. The focus was on the five C's, collaboration, critical thinking, communication, and creativity. So here the students, they don't sit in a typical, in a traditional way in which they are facing the blackboard. All the students, they sit in a collaborative way, they use technologies as tools to communicate, uh -huh. and there's a lot of digital programs with Microsoft Education, with Intel Skills Education, Languages and diversities are big, robotics and STEM education is there and a lot of focus is on, on life skills and values through citizenship curriculum and we have connected it to the sustainable development goals. So all that we keep hearing you have been able to do that as the future world schools like you said. Uh, Faisal tell me you have been on both the sides, you've, you've been on the private side. You're a big um, stakeholder when it comes to the private sector. And you also had your public experiences, A, making this big private affair work. And I've seen you sort of run around the courts and talk about things, the policy level things have always bothered you. And then you also got an opportunity to serve as a minister for a while. Um, so, so give us a bit of insight on the sector, the private and the public. This is a big debate of it needs to be one, the curriculum needs to be one, and you have sort of tasted both. So what's your experience of it? Well, I did have an opportunity to serve my country as a minister in Punjab government uh, for the last year's interim government. Um, and I did experience uh, the cabinet and how decision making is done. So yes, my story is from classrooms practitioner to go getting into the cabinet. I did see and experience and reflected on the missing links and the opportunities in the public sector. I am a strong believer social change and inclusive quality education and literacy is the mainly it must come through the public sector because you see Pakistan has the largest number of out of school children in the world in fact the second largest 22.8 million children as per the UNICEF report. So for me the first line of defense for national security 
is not a standing army it is a standing society and health and education are two main components so when i am a strong advocate and a champion of public sector reforms i have a foundation we have reformed 250 public sector schools for all the way from sindh to the gilgit baltistan and we still work with different international donor organizations and so my public sector experience gave me an understanding and a reflection on what do we need to do as a nation both at the federal level and at the provincial level um, the thought and the vision for one curriculum and one textbook so you see we need we do need uh, we do not need uniformity in curriculum we need unity in curriculum the federation is very weak because of the provincial autonomy that we have given to the learning outcomes, to the critical thinking, to the curriculum development, textbook boards. So when you want to develop national ideology, patriotism is very different to Pakistaniyat. And Pakistaniyat is very different to ideology. When you want to develop a collective national ideology, which is based on a core and fundamental values of being Pakistanis, you need a standard minimum critical curriculum framework and for that you need learning outcomes based on unity, unity of values, unity of outcomes, unity of learning, unity of um, understanding of our issues. So I am a strong believer education should have been a federal subject, 18th amendment is a big impediment, provinces wanted it but now it is the provincial responsibility, do they lack the capacity or do they lack the skill or do they lack the will? So for me, whatever social change and global inclusiveness that we will reach somehow to ensure our commitment to sustainable development goals, it has to come out by strengthening the public education system and we the private sector will play our part on all accounts, may it that be in terms of policy, or governance or decision making. Uh, give us some insight when you looked after the portfolio as the provincial minister for a while. Were there any realizations that you didn't have when you've just been doing your work, when you get into the system? Is there more that you saw? Yeah, of course, it's the size and the scale. You know, Punjab is 120 million people. And I was the minister for education for a while, then human rights, then social welfare, Betul Mal, population and so on. The size and the scale for governance, the 36 districts in Punjab and the, and the opportunity that we are sitting on. I just thought because, you know, being an interim minister, our job was to ensure together with the cabinet and our chief minister to support free, fair and just elections. So under the election commission rules, you cannot make profound impact on the public policy and you are not even entitled to uh, function your prerogative for transfers and postings. But I thought to myself that this is the real opportunity. People like us, those who want to talk about change, and for that you need scale. And with scale, you create sustainability, and that is how you see the social impact. So if someone wants to make a difference, I do think that the route is through the constituencies, through the legislation, and through the democratic principles of governance and leadership. So yes, um, uh, I was more. I was there as a professional and a technocrat. I met a lot of people, and I used my own skill, a leadership skill of empathy and compassion. So what did I say? I asked my staff. I said, okay, I can't do transfers and postings. I can't spend a lot of money, but can I appreciate and recognize? They say, yes, sir. You are the minister. You can appreciate and recognize. And I went to 16 districts of Punjab. And I met these uh, women working in early childhood care. I met to the. I went to these special care schools, um, literacy departments, uh, Punjab. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, homes for the underprivileged and for the uh, 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 the, the, the orphans. And uh, I organized events and uh, I did a lot of uh, engagement with those uh, public sector uh, practitioners and we appreciated them. I wrote a lot of letters and I motivated them and I did give them um, um, philanthropic grants from in my own capacity. But I saw a lot of lovely people working across Pakistan all the way from Lahore to Laya, uh, from Muzaffargarh uh, to Muzang 
and all these people need someone who has a political will, uh, who has a social skill and whose government is willing to pay the bill. <laughs> the skill, the will and the bill, yes. Uh, what are you most proud of? You've, you've been around for a while, you've, you have about 20,000 students all across Pakistan, about 50 campuses. What is it that really, really makes you proud of, of the journey? Uh, my people and my pupils. You know, when I see students and when I see that I've been able to make a positive impact on their lives, uh, maybe may, may it be through counselling or through opportunity or through a socially inclusive contribution, when I'm able to inspire them and, and when I'm able to make them dream big, because the problem in Pakistan is, and our Prime Minister these days, he talks a lot about it, dream big, dream big. Actually, thinking big is a real problem. And a lot of people, they just want their children to be sent to good schools so that they become doctors and engineers and IT professionals and beta and they should start with the job. And my slogan to my students and parents is that if you want to send your child to my school, I will not prepare them for a nokri of 50,000 rupees a month for sure. I want them to create 50 jobs a month. Wow. So that when I see that journey taking place, my students coming up as entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, as incubators, as the developers, you know, they're popping up their apps, they're setting up their e-commerce websites, they're developing mobile applications. And I like I always say to young people, parents, society and stakeholders, Pakistan ain't happening. It is happening, happening. It is so happening. we are going through a digital <laughs> transformation. So when I see my kids in with happy, positive, engaged students, not wasting time on Facebooks and with this digital media populism, my heart rests in happiness, joy and hail. Secondly, I'm very proud of the people that I work with. May that be our parents, but mainly teachers and our staff. I want you to know that people say CPEC is a game changer in Pakistan. Some people say something else is a game changer in Pakistan. Some people say Kartarpur is a game changer. Some say CPEC is a game changer. The Some game say is something not changing else. Though. I tell you who is a game changer. The women of Pakistan are the game changer in Pakistan today. I am one of the large employees of professional urban women at workplace in Pakistan. And our women, they need three things. They need respect, they need recognition, and they need reward. If an organization is willing to give them a journey based on reward, recognition, and respect, our women in particular, men of course, they transform the game yeah. and they change the future of the country and the nation. As someone said once in IMF or World Bank, hey Pakistan, if you give you one dollar, what is the best ROI on one dollar? And I would say invest in women and the girl child. Because you invest in a woman's education or girl child education, you have invested in the generations. So these two kinds of people, my teachers, my faculty, my staff, my students, my heart goes happy. Even if I meet them in Kosar market or I meet them in my classrooms. And for me, that is the biggest gift. A lot of people still do not believe the thing that I'm in it for profit and they think that, you know, I'm some sort of a businessman. I feel sorry for them. Uh, part of you is. Uh, you know. <laughs> part of you is. But it's good that you make meaning and you no, make money. No, but you see, time. I'm a sustainable social entrepreneur. And I always say to people, those who say that you are in it for business, I say, yes, I do make a profit, but I profit the society. Now you decide which one is bigger. And with this intention, with this kind of profit, is it always, you know, it's far more than what has been invested in it. Um, Faisal, look back for a second and tell me if you had to do anything differently in your journey, what would that be? Well, I mean, if I would not have ended up in teaching and learning, I would have been a, a creative person for sure. I would have been working in creative industry. Because, you know, if you visit my schools and my classrooms, they symbolize modern 21st century sustainable architecture. I'm always buying planters, designer furniture. I'm always into, you know, making an environment look good, yeah. jazzy, chic, urban. 
So if I would not have been in education, I would have been an architect, uh, I would have been an interior designer, I would have been in maybe in design and fashion industry, or I would be doing something which has a sustainable impact on society through yeah. creativity. Yeah, needs that creativity for you. What's next? Well, next is to develop and enrich the social contract. Uh, recently, over the last two years, because of judicial uh, engagement, uh, we have seen that the social contract between the society and the state and the citizens has weakened uh, and people have uh, stopped giving the regard uh, to the teachers and the schools and it has become a very populist act for even the governments, for decision makers, yeah. for regulators. Every morning at midnight, uh, the government officers and uh, local administrations, they are submitting notices, do this, do that, do that. No, schools and teachers demand respect. If you talk about values, if you talk about humanity, if you talk about Pakistaniyat, and if you talk about our culture, Amesha aplo kehte hain taaleem nahi tarbiyat. To tarbiyat ki pehli bunyad respect hai. To mera ab ye kam hai ki main maashre ko ensure karu or sensitize karu ki apne asatsa ki or school ki respect ensure karni hai. And likewise, the schools and institutions we have to respect the teachers. So what we have seen, a lot of bigotry, a lot of bully, a lot of populism. Anyone who wakes up one fine morning and they are in breach of their own social contract and writes something about someone, it's not a nice thing. Yeah, without and even knowing what, what all they have done. It's, it's not a nice this. thing. People talk about it in terms of social rights and human rights and free speech and freedom of speech. There is a thin line between freedom of speech and between uh, uh, the expression and truthfulness. Uh, so I think we as a society, we need to reflect. Uh, even in India, a teacher is very well respected, uh, even in Sri Lanka and even in Bangladesh. Yeah. So what has happened to Pakistan if the public sector has not been able to deliver what it is meant to, of course the private sector has taken uh, the share in the market. And there is a private school for rupees 50 a month in Balwal to rupees 50,000 a month in Lahore Defence. So the access to school is based on choice, is based on equity, and it's based on your own it's opportunity. It's based on value that the, that the customer agrees with. That the but here we have developed with, yeah. a culture of semi nationalization so there is nothing wrong with well, regulatory. we keep doing that and then we keep forgetting that Faisal. It all goes on but thank you very much. We have seen the strategic side of you, the leader side of you, the institution builder you and the academia, uh, all the experiences that you have shared. I'd like to have some fun side before I let you go. So this is a quick one, okay? I, I'm asking question and I want a quick answer to that. This is like a rapid fire. So you can loosen up a little and help <laughs> us with this last round. And this is for your people and your people and also the population that is watching you. Uh, there is more to festival than, than this. Um, so very quickly a rapid fire. Uh, one thing that you would like to change about yourself? Uh, myself? Uh, <laughs> You're I, losing it. Uh, stop pleasing everyone. Okay, how long does it take for you to get ready? Uh, 25 minutes. At what age do you want to retire? Uh, 50. Hmm, how much time to that? <laughs> a song that is stuck in your mind keeps coming back over and over. A song? Nusrat uh, Fateh Khan. Nusrat Fateh Khan. Any specific song? Just all of them. All of them. Is there one movie that you want to see all of Pakistan? One uh, <laughs> movie that you want to see all of Pakistan? Uh, I think Sara Pakistan ko Netflix dekhna chahiye. <laughs> Netflix dekhna chahiye. Achha, badi categories are here. But one movie, come on, give us one movie. One feature that you would like everyone to watch. Uh, no, I'm not a big fan. On You're movies. not a big movie fan. Okay, uh, your, what were your favorite activities when you were growing up? Uh, when I was growing up, of course, uh, cycling and uh, cricket and mm. uh, reading. Yeah. What makes you really angry? Uh, people's inability to show sensitivity to other people. Hmm. Have you ever beaten up anybody? Me? I've given a lot of beating to myself, both intellectually, mentally, socially. Hey, that's not what the question was. Have you ever beaten up somebody else? That's the question. <laughs> well, maybe in some sort of a, 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 you know, a school kind of an environment. 
maybe yes. Yeah, and uh, who inspires you? Uh, my country, my people, and uh, I'm a big fan of Pakistani people and society at large. There's so much we can do together. It's wonderful. If you get a billboard which millions would see, what would you put on it? Be true to your school, your school of thought, maybe your country, your origin, your identity, but be true to yourself. Wow, it's profound. Thank you very much, Professor. This was delightful talking to you. You rightly deserve the big accolades that you have won, the respect that you have, not just of the, of the ones in power, but the ones who don't have the power, who perhaps look up to you and institutions like you for better education, for a more prosperous future. I wish you well. Thank you very much. And we'll give you a hand for that. Thank you.